top of the morning to y'all this morning. Well, in my morning Bible study, I was over here uh, trying to finish up the New Testament because I just read through the New Testament and I'm right here at the book of Revelations. That's where I'm going to start next. But as I was finishing up Jude, something jumped off the page at me here and I just wanted to share it with y'all. Praise God. Check this out. It says right here in Jude chapter... Jude, <laughs> in verse 20, it says, it says, check this out. But you, beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You see that there? With exceeding, let's go to Romans 16 real quick. Romans 16 right over here. What's it say over here in Romans 16? Check this out. Hang on here. Romans 16, Romans 16, verse 27. What's it say? Romans 16, verse 27 says, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. To God only wise. Okay, let's read into that. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of everlasting of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So why does he say to God only wise? Because that's all we should be concerned with is the way, the good way, the good way of God. That's why he says to God only wise. We should be only meditating on God. He said, don't be looking for the enemy. You be looking for me. You be found waiting and looking for me. He don't be saying be found waiting and looking for the enemy. He said be found waiting and looking for me. Yes, we are to recognize our enemy. And we are to uh, 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 fight this fight daily and run from evil daily. We're supposed to do all those things just like the scriptures say. But what's he say there? To God only wise. Because he only wants us to meditate on the good things of God. Why would he want us to meditate on the fruit of the flesh? When he wants us to meditate on the fruit of the Spirit. Let me show you. Over here, Galatians. Check this out. Galatians, right over here. This one back here. Ephesians, Galatians. Where are we at here? Galatians. Colossians went too far. Philippians. Come on now. We're just about there. Okay. Galatians. There it is. Galatians 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit... What spirit? That spirit he just said to uh, be meditating in. Only God, right? God wise. Right? What's he say? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Man, them three alone are in high demand, right? <laughs> then you got long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Why is there no law against those things? Well, because if you're walking in that character, there ain't no law against you. The only law was brought just to show us our sin, right? To keep us straight. What's that 25 say? If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you be... Uh, uh, tempted also bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of christ that's right we're called to bear our brother's burden man but don't go attaching yourself to a burden that you know is going to pull you out of the way what way the good and right way the perfect way you can't do that. That's tempting God. You got to stand strong in your faith. Stand strong in your relationship with your God. And the only way to do that is to get into this book every single morning and suit up, man. Get that armor on. So that you can withstand them evil darts coming at you all day long. When that big lawnmower, that proverbial lawnmower tries to mow your grass. Yeah. Because we leave in the morning strong. Because we done prayed up. We done read up. We done studied up. And we're feeling real good about what we just read. 
We're feeling really good about our God. And then we bump into somebody that might just use his, his title real loosely. And it offends us. Well, there's the first blade of grass being mowed down. And we bump into somebody else that's just having a really bad day. And they're just cursing and acting goofy and stupid. And boom, there we go. We get mowed down a little bit more, right? And we bump into someone else that maybe do something negative, And boom, it mows us down a little bit more. But what happens to us? Eventually, we end up just like Lot. And what happened to Lot? He was vexed daily because the people around him in Sodom and Gomorrah was constantly doing things that was just the opposite of the holy good way that God has prepared for us. Jesus says in the book of Matthew, he'd been preparing a way for us since the foundations of this earth. Now come on, man, what are we going to tap into? We're going to tap into the flesh and be miserable? Are we going to tap into this spirit and let it overtake us and overcome us and help us through our rough times and our hard times? Help us control our tongue and our mind and our actions and our body. Help us to pull out of a heated situation. To help us pull out of a tempting situation. I don't sit here without any fault. You make no mistake. I've won some battles and I've lost some battles. But you know what? I'm still fighting. So until I give up, until I quit running this race, until I quit fighting this fight, there's still hope for this old cowboy, and there's still hope for you too. The book says as long as a sleeping dog has breath in his lungs, there's hope. And I remember a little lady in the Bible told the king himself, said, even the dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table. Now you tell me, is there help out there for us if we want it? Yes. If we want help, there's help there for us. But if we like squandering in our sin, if we like buddy buddy up with disobedience, if we like doing anything that the enemy would have us doing that he can attach one of his fallen angels to, then guess what you're going to have? A really rough time. <laughs> That's right. Let me back up here a little bit. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath or anger, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murderings, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. So there's more. It just isn't anything like that, right? Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, they, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you got any of that going on in your life right now? Then I suggest you repent. And you return to your first love, which is Jesus Christ. That's right. He's the one that brought you up out of that water if you've been baptized. And if you haven't been baptized and you're older than the age of 20, you might sure well consider that. Because uh, Jesus had a conversation with a man named Nicodemus over there in the, first, uh, in, 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 in the fourth gospel, John chapter 3. And he says, Can a man enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? You know, and if, if you don't know, then, then, then you're going to ask questions like that. And Jesus said, unless you're born of water and of the Spirit, you may not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it takes that water, that grave, if you will. You have to be baptized in the Lord Jesus Christ. And after you get baptized in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's going to be some temptation come your way. It's going to try to knock you right off your horse just like it did Jesus. You make no mistake, you ain't no better than Christ. And if temptation come right after baptism for Christ, then you make no mistake, temptation's coming after you right after your baptism. Now how are you going to handle that? You're going to sink yourself into the word of the Lord? Submerge yourself into what is good, right, just, and holy? Or are you going to keep playing games with God? Because I'm telling you, God's not a game player. He's a game changer. He can change your whole life for you. And you're still going to deal with some stuff. But you're going to deal with it righteously. You're going to be able to stand upright. You're going to be able to shake that stuff off. You're going to be able to know that no matter what, He's forgiven you because He's standing you up. He's given you a will. He's given you the right. And he's given you the power. He's given you the tools to overcome you. But you've got to want to overcome you. You can't be making provisions for your flesh. To the point, it's going to destroy you. Right? 
Matter of fact, I think this book says just the opposite. This book says those that walk in the Spirit. The Spirit of what? The Spirit of truth. God's Word. So when you catch yourself getting a little bit twisty, when you catch yourself getting a little bit bent, when you catch yourself a little bit out there in left field somewhere where you don't belong, it might pay to practice this verse. Be still and know that I am God. All right, shut up if you ain't got nothing good to say. And just know who's in control. He said, go ahead and be angry, but sin not. So he knows we're going to get angry. He knows this vessel. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all points in this flesh. You think he don't know? He knows. That's why he came and dwelt in this flesh. He let us handle him, and then he let us murder him. Just so he could save us. Now that's a God that really loves his creation. I don't know why I went into all that this morning. I want to read you one more thing over here. In Galatians 5, verse 3 says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, there you have it. Get the loving and stop hating. Y'all have a good day. Read your Bibles. <laughs> Peace in Jesus.